The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronics community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com slash presents. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit. We've been learning about shift registers and how they can manipulate serial and parallel data to expand the number of inputs and outputs available. In this video, I'm going to show you how to use a universal shift register that can shift serial or parallel input data to multiple parallel outputs. For this demo, I'm using a 74HC194 4-bit bidirectional shift register. This shift register has four parallel outputs, four parallel inputs, and two serial inputs, one that shifts left and one that shifts right. Pins 9 and 10, S0 and S1, control which mode the chip is in. There are three possible input options. Using serial input DSR, causing the data in to shift right. Using serial input DSL, causing the data in to shift left. Or transferring data directly from the four parallel inputs to the four parallel outputs. I keep saying serial and parallel. Let's make sure you understand what that means. In series, bits, the ones and zeros, or high and low signals, are processed one at a time, in order, requiring only one input or output. In parallel, a set number of bits of data can be processed all at once, but this requires multiple inputs or outputs, one per bit of data. This chip can transfer data by serial in parallel out or parallel in parallel out. I'll start by showing you how to use the serial inputs to shift data to the parallel outputs. Let's look at the data sheet to see what supply voltage we need. The supply voltage should be a minimum of two volts and a maximum of six volts. Rather than using the typical five volts, I'm going to run it off of 4.5 volts so it could be run off of a battery pack. This chip requires a clock signal. We can make one with a 555 timer, but let's first look at the chip. Here is the 16-pin shift register. Pins 2 and 7 are the serial inputs. Pins 3 through 6 are the parallel inputs. Pins 9 and 10 are the mode select pins. Pins 12 through 15 are the parallel outputs. To start, we connect pin 16 to VCC and pin 8 to ground. Pin 1 is the master reset, which is active low, so it gets connected to VCC to keep it inactive. Pin 11, CP, is where the clock pulse will go in. Here's the clock circuit made with a 555 timer. Pin 1 goes to ground. Pin 2 is tied to VCC and pin 6. Pin 4 is pulled high to VCC. Pin 5 is pulled low to ground with a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. Pin 6, while being tied to pin 2, is also tied to pin 7 through a potentiometer. Pin 7 also connects to VCC with a resistor, and pin 8 connects to VCC. Pin 3 outputs to the shift registers pin 11. The potentiometer can be replaced with a normal resistor, but I like to be able to adjust the timing of the clock pulse, so I use a variable resistor. To use the first serial input, we add one button to pull S0 high to enable DSR, and a second button to pull DSR high. Resistors connecting to ground are added so that both pins default to being pulled low. For the second serial input, we add the same buttons and resistors for pins DSL and S1. Pressing the first red button enables the right shift serial input, while pressing the first blue button enables the left shift serial input. The four output pins each connect to a resistor and LED. Since we're not using the parallel inputs right now, we'll connect them all to ground to keep them pulled low. Okay, that's everything we need to use these serial inputs. Let me show you how they work. The board is connected to my power supply, which is set to 4.5 volts. Pressing either the DSL or DSR button does nothing. 
holding down the S0 button enables DSR. So pressing DSR shifts in a high signal, which shifts right across the outputs. If the DSR button is not pressed, the button is pulled low through the resistor and a low signal shifts right across the outputs. The same goes for the other serial input. Hold S1 to enable DSL. Pressing the DSL button and a high signal shifts left across the outputs. Release it and a low signal shifts left. Turning the pot changes the timing of the clock pulse, which can cause the register to shift faster or slower. That was how to use the universal shift register in serial in parallel out mode. Now I'll show you how to set up parallel in parallel out mode. Instead of having the four parallel inputs just tied to ground, each will connect to a switch connected to ground on one side and to VCC on the other. So each switch can selectively send a high or low signal. Let's take a look at the truth tables that are found in the shift registers datasheet to see how the chip gets set for parallel in. Here's the truth table from the chip's datasheet. For the example I've already demoed, series in parallel out mode, when S1 is high, DSL is enabled to shift left. The data at DSL shifts left across the outputs. Or when S0 is high, DSR is enabled to shift right. The data at DSR shifts right across the outputs. What we'll see in the next example, parallel in parallel out mode, when both S1 and S0 are high, parallel load is enabled. Whatever signals are at parallel inputs D0 through 3 will be transferred to the corresponding outputs Q0 through 3. So both left buttons need to be pressed for data to be transferred in from the parallel inputs. Here I've added a second breadboard with one switch for each parallel input. Each switch is connected to VCC and ground, and the entire board gets power by connecting to the other breadboard, supplying it from the power supply. Again, pressing the first red button connected to S0 enables DSR, shifting the high or low signals right across the outputs. Pressing the first blue button connected to S1 enables DSL, shifting the high or low signals left across the outputs. When S0 and S1 are pressed together, the parallel inputs are enabled. If I flip any of the parallel input switches, the corresponding output will change on the next clock pulse. Pressing the DSR or DSL buttons, you can see that the data from those pins is ignored, overridden by the parallel inputs. By slowing the clock pulse, you can see that the data at the inputs does not change instantly, but changes on the next clock pulse. You can see that if one mode button is released, the data from the parallel inputs was stored and shifts left or right depending on which pin is still enabled. Well, there you have it. Now, shift registers are typically used to expand the inputs or outputs of a microcontroller. I'll show you how to do that in upcoming videos. Now, those shift registers usually have one serial input going to many parallel outputs or many parallel inputs going to one serial output. And they frequently can only shift in one direction, usually right. Since universal shift registers can shift both left and right, as well as being capable of parallel in parallel out mode, what uses can you think of for them? Tell me about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning. Thank you.